Hello, everyone. Welcome to a snippet of our webinar with Dr. Neil Kravitz on aesthetic considerations for canine lateral substitutions. This was from September 2020. This is just a tiny part of the one-hour webinar to give you a sense of what you can learn from Dr. Kravitz on this topic. All GCO subscribers get free access to all of our webinars. And this is an $80 value per webinar. So if you wanted to watch all of this webinar, for instance, and you aren't a JCO subscriber, it would cost you $80. If you wanted to attend this webinar for live and get a chance to ask questions, it would have cost you $100. A digital only subscription to JCO for one year is $223 right now. So if you're interested in at least two of our webinars, it really does pay to just get a subscription and get complete access to JCO as well. It may even pay for it if you're only interested in just this one webinar. We do around five webinars a year. In 2020, we'll have done webinars on conservative phase one treatment, digitally guided indirect bonding, aesthetic considerations for canine lateral substitutions, and non-surgical treatment of gummy smiles, in addition to the free webinars that we did on COVID-19, which you can find on our website or on our YouTube channel. If you want to buy this webinar or subscribe to JCO, the link is on the screen and will be displayed again at the end. Enjoy. Let's go into ectopic canines. Now, I know the subject of this presentation is substitutions, but I think there, there is some information regarding ectopic teeth that does overlap, and I do want to make sure I cover it. And this is great for any residents who might be listening tonight because a lot of this stuff will be on your board examination. So the, the key when you have ectopic canines is you immediately want to look for other anomalies. This is particularly true when you have palatally displaced canines. So if you have a dental anomaly, such as a peg lateral, I want you to immediately begin looking to see if you have missing teeth or palatally displaced canines. So here's what I want you to remember regarding ectopic canines. Remember what I like to call the rule of three. They occur in 3% of the population. They are three times more likely in women. And they are three times more likely, even more than three times more likely on the palate, about 85% more likely on the palate. Palatally displaced canines, palatally impacted canines are usually related to a genetic component, whereas labially displaced canines are more commonly associated with arch length insufficiency or crowding. Now, there's two etiologies for ectopic canines that you need to know. And I've really worked hard, again, to keep this very simple and easy to grasp. The two etiologies are the guidance theory promoted by Becker and the genetic theory promoted by Peck. Now, the guidance theory says we need the distal slope of that lateral incisor for the canine to come in correctly. Remember the broad bent phenomenon of the ugly duckling stage, that mesioangular canine hits the distal root of the lateral incisor that causes the root to go mesial, which causes the central root to go mesial, which causes that ugly duckling diastema. And as the canine guides down the distal aspect of the lateral incisor, that diastema will close somewhat in the self-correction of that broad bent phenomenon. So the theory is if you don't have a lateral guide, if you're missing a lateral incisor, if you have some type of blockage, uh, maybe a deciduous cuspid that's not resorbing or some type of cyst, any blockage to that lateral guide will cause a canine impaction. Now, Sheldon Peck says, well, actually, this palatally displaced canine is associated with other genetic anomalies, such as peg laterals or missing teeth. So these are key articles that you need to know for those who are taking their boards, and I encourage you to take your boards or who are getting recertified. Palatally displaced canines are associated with genetic anomalies. You have a peg lateral, think a palatally displaced canine. You have a palatally displaced canine, think a missing mandibular second premolar or a mesioangular mandibular second molar. Remember, La labially displaced canines are usually associated with crowding. Yuri Kural said that if we can extract C and H before that canine crosses over the distal aspect of that lateral incisor, if we can extract C and H early, 78% of the time that ectopic canine will auto-correct. It's even better if you take out B, C, H, and I. 
Steve Lindauer went one step further and said that if you can extract that deciduous cuspid before the maxillary adult canine crosses the midway point on the lateral sizer, you'll have the highest level of success. So it's not just taking out C and H. We got to take C and H out before the canine crosses over the lateral root. Otherwise, that 78% goes down to 64%. Now, Leonardi and Army added to this. They said if you distalize the upper arch, if you create arch length with a cervical headgear, maybe perhaps even a Herbst appliance, that canine will better autocorrect. So 78% turns to 82%, turns to 84%. So if you have a pallidly displaced canine, take out C and H. Take out C and H early and maybe throw in a distalizer and be careful with the protraction face mask, which will cause arch length loss. Army said, don't just take out C and H, but also expand. And that's how you get that 78% to turn to 82% or to 84%. So in summary, if you see peg laterals or missing laterals, think powdly displaced ectopic canines. If you have C and H, take out C and H early to help those teeth auto-correct. And if you need to, distalize or and expand. That will help those canines come in. This is a summary of all those key board articles that you need to know. So this is what I do when I look at a panoramic radiograph. Clearly, you're going to see peg laterals right away. If I see peg laterals, I'm immediately thinking about powdly displaced canines. And it doesn't just have to be a peg lateral. It could be a it could be a peg lateral that is the crown is displaced, right? Yuri Kural would say that. If you see the, the crown flared out, that's pathognomonic for the ectopic canine on top of the root of that lateral incisor. So if I see a peg lateral, I'm thinking an ectopic canine, and then I'm immediately seeing, looking to see if there's any missing teeth, particularly mandibular second premolars. So here's a very classic presentation that will come into your office. You have severely ectopic canines, you have undersized lateral incisors, and you have missing mandibular second premolars, and we likely will not develop all of our wisdom teeth. This is what Sheldon Peck was saying, that when you have a PDC, palatally displaced canine, you have all these other components that are going on in the body. Delayed dental eruption, small laterals, missing mandibular second premolars, mesioangular mandibular second molars. So you might want to jump to do an expander but when you see these missing mandibular second molars, it looks like you have early signs of ankylosis of those teeth. Maybe we start considering an extraction pattern with upper fours, lower E's, for example, or maybe even, believe it or not, upper threes, lower E's. Look at that large follicle around those ectopic canines. We know from research that as that follicle grows, the incidence of lateral incisor root resorption increases. Don't just look at the angulation of the canine, look for the size of its follicle. Now the real debate I like to have is if you have missing lateral incisors on a young patient and you think you are going to do a substitution case, okay, we have a little bit of dental protrusion here, and perhaps we'll do an upper sub or even an upper sub and a lower five extraction. Who knows? It's a little early to tell. Okay. Do you treat in phase one? I hope you enjoyed that. If you want the rest, the link to either purchase this webinar or subscribe to JCO is on the screen. Remember, it costs $80 to buy the recording and $100 to attend live for all of our webinars. And it is $223 right now for a digital only subscription to JCO. You can find all of our past webinars on our website, not just those from 2020, but also ones on managing the clear line of practice, best practice protocols for TADS placement, social media strategy, and much more. And remember that $223 not only gets you every issue of JCO, but also access to our complete archive, more than 50 years worth of articles. So join us today.